Hello YouTube, welcome to macOS Tahoe on M1 MacBook Air. Yes, the same M1 MacBook Air that started the Apple Silicon revolution in 2020. So is it still relevant now? This iconic wedge shape, which was designed during the Steve Jobs era, is it still relevant today? And Apple still sells or the third party resellers like Amazon still sells this MacBook Air for around 50 to 60,000. Indian rupees. So is it worth buying this? Or if you're having the M1 MacBook Air, so should you upgrade to the latest M4? So I'm going to tell all this in this video and the performance of this M1 MacBook Air with macOS Tahoe, does it lag or how is the experience? So everything we're going to see in this video. So let's get started. First, let's talk about the macOS Tahoe features that the M1 MacBook Air gets. Well, we get all the features announced and there is no nothing which is left out for the M1 MacBook Air. So which is a good thing. So you can see uh, the uh, Mac running the Mac OS Tahoe, the latest uh, beta one version here on my M1 MacBook Air. And so let's see all the icons. It's redesigned and the transparent widgets over the left side and even the control center, everything is transparent. So which is what I like. And this is the new design language, which is across all the Apple devices. So if you have the Apple ecosystem like iPhone, iPad, or even the Vision Pro, it first started this uh, overall, this look of the liquid glass thing. And now it's across all the devices, even on Apple Watch, which is a coherent ecosystem thing and a new uh, UI language. Uh, I mean, like a UI design language. So. I wish, I wish to see all the applications which is written in this particular language so we get a cohesive experience overall. Well, let's not carry it away by that. And let's see, uh, I mean, like uh, before we get into the performance, so let's uh, play around with this interface. So will it lag or anything like that? So we can get a look and uh, let me add some uh, control center icon so I don't have this uh, music recognition so let me add and we have all these options you can also add on the top of the menu bar or you can add on the control center so uh, these customization options uh, I mean like initially we didn't have all these things and we had to use some third party applications but now Apple itself gives all these applications and uh, I mean like these options and you can do these kind of things and by doing this, you can notice like there is no lag or anything with the M1 MacBook Air and this uh, particular thing, the M1. So right now we have the M4 MacBook Air. So right now I put into dark mode. So again, the transition was quite simple and seamless. So there wasn't any uh, artifact or something like that, even though this is a 60 hertz display. But yeah, like uh, if you have the pro version, you get the 120 pro motion thing. But this is what it is even with the M4 MacBook Air. And you can have all transparent icon. I think this is taking a bit more time to do. And well, we have it over here. So it's all transparent now. So if you like this uh, minimalistic look, you can go ahead with this. Or if you want to personalize even more, like if you want to add some tinted icons. So let me uh, go to this and add a color. So if you are a fan of uh, these kind of things, again, uh, personalizations, well, you can do that. So let me change back to normal. Uh, I see the color is still uh, not changed. Maybe it's taking some time. So again, this is the beta one. Again, the developer beta one. So maybe uh, with the next betas or the uh, public release, we should see all these transitions happen seamlessly. Well, it's there finally. And the M1, uh, I mean, like uh, till now the heat or anything. So I'm not uh, seeing that. So one thing I'm disappointed with macOS Tahoe is the removal of Launchpad. So I've been using Launchpad since uh, I migrated to macOS from Windows. So there I used to have the start button and here I used to use the Launchpad. Now it's been replaced by apps. So what it basically does is it opens the spotlight search. So I mean, like I don't get the overall all the applications listed in some view. So even on phone, like all the applications are listed, but here I don't get it. But again, like you might say there is an option like a command shift A and it opens all the applications in the application folder. But I still prefer the 
pages of applications and I can go through that. And uh, yeah, again, if you're used to that, you would know. So, but yeah, like uh, I think we will uh, pretty much get used to this or I would wish Apple at least get an option to bring the uh, launch pad back. So who knows? So again, this is the first beta. So uh, this is how you launch the application. So basically you can type in there and it will get the application. Or uh, if you used all the uh, recent apps, and again, like Spotlight is also uh, much improved. But what Apple didn't improve this time is Apple Intelligence. Well, it's still in beta. So, but yeah, like uh, at least the basic stuff that you would like to do with your Mac. So if you want to do concise some notes or uh, there are again, like uh, some newer features like live translation, and also the uh, latest shortcuts from the intelligent shortcuts. So all these things you can use it for your, uh, I mean, like all these things happens on device, except the chat GPT uh, uh, once. So again, uh, coming to the chat GPT side. So as you see the image playground, so initially when it was launched, it was in beta and still now I think it's on beta. So, but it's improved quite a lot. So again, you don't just have the on device uh, image generation thing. So now you can also use chat GPT. So ideally, uh, I think uh, a few months before people were doing this uh, uh, Ghibli images. So right now you can do this on image playground with the help of chat GPT again. So I typed the prompt and it would take some time for uh, generating the image. Again, one thing I would uh, urge everyone who are trying this uh, developer beta is to use the feedback app. So if something is not working properly or if something is broken, it's taking some time, everything, you can report it on this feedback assistant. So log into it and you can report uh, any issues specific to you or on the OS for everyone. So still it's generating. So, and uh, I mean like, uh, uh, yeah, finally we have the uh, Ghibli image of myself. Oh, okay. Now coming to next thing, it's the continuity features. That's what makes a Mac or an Apple device. So if I get a FaceTime call on my phone, I can answer it directly on the Mac or iPad or, so that's what uh, we get with the continuity. With this macOS Tahoe, right now, all the live activities which are coming on the mobile phone, so I can also see it on the Mac. So while I'm working, so if I get some notification or something, I can just uh, jump back to the phone mirroring app and I can also check on multiple details or I can keep track of the orders or something like that right on the Mac on the status bar or the menu bar. So which is a good thing again. And now we also have the phone application directly on the Mac. So I can uh, call someone again uh, with the help of uh, this continuity features. So which is pretty much improved and they all work flawlessly with the M1 MacBook Air. So there is no issues or slowdown or anything like that. So coming to this now, uh, yeah, like uh, let's come to the main point. So how the macOS Tahoe performs on this M1 MacBook Air. So let's see, I have opened few tabs here and let me see how much usage are we getting. Uh, yeah, like I think I'm having some 10 tabs. So normally uh, this is what people do with the MacBook Air. So the web browsing and I have opened few YouTube and other uh, Twitter or X. So uh, this is pretty much a normal load. So everything is around uh, 40 to 60% in the memory utilization and CPU utilization. So which is really good. And I was using Safari. So now let's use a Microsoft Edge. Uh, so uh, just to spice some things up. So let me open uh, multiple browser tabs. So I have this. Uh, uh, yeah, like all these links, let's open it at once just to see if it uh, shutters or uh, like if the performance degrades. And uh, just for your context, this Mac is optioned with 8 gigabytes of memory and 512 gigabytes of SSD. So let's see the performance with the 8 gigabyte version here. Because uh, right now the ones with the M4 MacBook Air, so it starts at 16 gigabytes, but the storage, it's still at 256. So I would urge everyone, like uh, if you are planning on getting the new 
uh, MacBook Air, please go with the 512 gigabytes. So even though if you don't require it at this point, so in future, like if you're adding multiple files or something like that, so you would have to uh, need that uh, extra memory. So right now, as you can see, uh, everything is clogged up. So uh, the processor utilization is at 100 and memory and the swap memory. So again, coming to the swap memory, which is nothing but the if your RAM is uh, almost like almost full and it's just left for some of the system activities to perform. So then it takes the uh, RAM from the SSD. So I mean, like it takes the memory from SSD. So it uses that. Uh, that is a slower memory. Again, like if you go for the higher hard disk, like uh, 512 or 1 gigabyte, so you are getting a faster SSD, So which is useful, again, with this swap memory usage. So if you're using multiple tabs or if you're using Xcode or Final Cut Pro or any such uh, high demanding applications, so you'd require that. So now, as you can see, all these applications are, uh, I uh, am getting this spinning wheel. So it is pretty slow. And obviously, like, uh, MacBook Care, people don't use it for a professional use, but again, still with all these uh, latest M series chip. So uh, it's no sludge. It's not like the Intel ages, but still uh, with the lower eight gigabytes of uh, memory. So it's uh, struggling a lot. So I would suggest if you are having the eight gigabytes model of the M1 MacBook Air, so you can go ahead and get the M4 macbook air so it starts now at 16 gigabytes of base ramp so you don't get uh, any such issues so even the calculate wrap as you saw it struggled a bit so now once i closed everything so everything is back to normal and uh, if you use it as a i mean like if you are a light user you can still go with the m1 macbook air so there is no harm and even the 8 gigabytes it's it's sufficient at least as of now it is sufficient even with the apple intelligence and all those features they have not limited it only to the 16 gigabytes as of now so coming to some synthetic benchmarks so these benchmarks again like uh, uh, the reason for keeping this is just to see if the performance has degraded from the previous mac os sonoma again like keeping in mind that uh, this is the uh, developer beta one so let me run the geekbench uh, tests and at at the end, like I'll be sharing all the results that I uh, get now and uh, compared to the previous one. So as you can notice right now, there is a slight difference. So 2228 compared to 2368 in single core. So again, like 100 points uh, here and there. So uh, again, like same with the uh, multi core also, like uh, there is almost like 1400 point difference. So uh, the CPU performance has degraded a little bit, but the GPU performance, uh, surprisingly, it's increased. So again, like with uh, a thousand points. So it might be a margin of error also, but again, like who knows? So uh, as you can see, uh, the performance with the glass effect and everything. So I don't see uh, much uh, difference which it has caused from the previous macOS Sonoma to the uh, present macOS Tahoe. And even the uh, AI performance, so it's more or less the same. So a simple conclusion. So if you're using the M1 MacBook Air and it has 8 gigabytes of memory, and if you are uh, a, a normal user, like you don't push your device to the edge, so I would suggest you can keep this device for still at least one or two more years to come. So if you are a power user and if you are feeling uh, uh, restricted with the 8 gigabytes or the memory situation, so it's good to upgrade to the M4 MacBook Air as they have 16 gigabytes basic. And I would also suggest you to go with the 512 gigabytes of internal storage. So now if you are someone who is on market for a new MacBook or a new laptop, so is it good to get the M1 MacBook Air? So I would suggest, so if your budget is around 50,000, so you can go with this, but but there is a big risk. So uh, this is the last uh, Mac OS release for the Intel Macs. So the next thing, uh, which is again, like uh, this 2020 MacBook Air is the uh, least supported Mac OS Tahoe device. So how many years it would be supported? 
well maybe around 2 years at least but if you are planning on keeping your macbook air for even longer i would suggest go with the m4 macbook air as it comes with 16 gigabytes of unified storage from the basic that would be my pick and there is one more thing welcome to my website where you'll find this i guide so this is a guide for all the apple devices if you are planning to buy or upgrade so when it's coming and when the new product is expected so all the devices from uh, the mac airpods even home pods so when the latest device is releasing so all these details you'll get in i guide so coming to i event so here if uh, the latest wwdc announcement so what all the newer announcements so uh, coming to this mac os 26 itself so you get the new spotlight search and all these new features the uh, cards which is uh, shown on the apple event so you can see it here so this is the new spotlight search it uh, improved a lot so now uh, let's go into the i update so which is the latest uh, software version which your device is running so currently it's on uh, uh, ios 18.5 and uh, what all the devices which is compatible with the mac os 26 or other devices so you can see it here so this macbook air 2020 is the one which is compatible with the mac os 26 mac os taho so all the previous macbook airs it's uh, not supported now so no intel macbook air is supported right now and the last part is the i upgrade so if you are planning on uh, getting the next iphone wait for iphone 17 series so this is the uh, lineup this is the purported lineup and it's not confirmed yet but uh, according to the leaks uh, which is the lineup which is available and if you are holding on to the iphone 12 pro or something like that so what are the uh, feature updates you are getting with the latest devices so all these details you will get on my website amitraj.com i'll leave a link below in the description and how to install this uh, developer beta so you'll have to register for your uh, developer thing and you get the beta updates directly on the device there is no need to install any beta profiles or anything right now so you'll directly get on the device and once you select this option you'll install it so that's all i had in this video thank you for watching subscribe for more videos like this and as always stay safe and peace